Praise the Lord, everybody. You can stand with me this morning. Who's excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. Excited for the Lord to move. Excited for the Holy Ghost to have its way. 
We got Brother Azzalini with us this morning and this evening. Super excited for him to be here with us, for the Lord to have his way in this service. If you'll join me in prayer this morning, just asking that the Lord would fall and that we would be responsive to him. Amen. Lord God, we come expecting and believing this morning. Oh, Lord, we know that you're going to move. You are a great God, and we are here in your presence, Lord, to dwell, God. We want to worship you. We want to praise you. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, God. We give you all praise and glory this morning to that matchless name of Jesus, Lord. Have your way throughout this service, Lord. Just infiltrate this building. Oh, let your spirit fall in a mighty way as we come before you, Lord. Oh, in one mind, one body, one accord to lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise you. Let's give him a hand clap of praise this morning. Oh, he's so worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Praise us. Praise him with us. Amen. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord. tribulations but through it all we rejoice and we give him the praise amen amen if you're able at this time we ask that you please stand we're going to go to the Lord in prayer uh, continue to remember our ongoing prayer requests from sister Phyllis Ante brother George Duke sister Christine Kendrick uh, several new requests from this week uh, continue to remember brother and sister Jones uh, recovering from illness uh, pastor was talking with pastor yesterday. He said they're doing much better. So uh, talking from him from Tuesday to Friday, he said you would be amazed at the, at the uh, improvement in them. So we know that healer. So keep praying for them. Amen. Uh, we ask that you lift up the Himes family. Uh, Brother Tyler's grandmother passed away this past week. So remember that family in this time of sorrow. Continue to remember uh, Brother Kevin Amontane, uh, continuing to dealing with his internal or his intestinal parasites dealing with strength in him. Uh, remember uh, Sister Rachel Niece and her family. Her uh, uncle, uh, Elwood, passed away this morning. So remember that family in their time of sorrow. And continue to remember their daughter, Crystal. Uh, 
gosh, she's having seizures again. And the Lord needs to move in that situation. Amen. All additional uh, requests signified by raising of hands. Lord Jesus, spoken and unspoken. We, we take these prayers to you, Lord Jesus. You are our healer. You are our savior. Lord Jesus, you, you guide us and you strengthen us. You provide us, Lord. You are the healer. You are our provider, Lord, whether it be a physical touch, financial touch, Lord. You are the strength. We come to you, Lord, lifting these up, knowing that you are our hope, Lord Jesus. In all things, we give you the glory and we give you the praise. Lord Jesus, you strengthen us, Lord, as we walk this walk. Lord, you ask that you take care of the caregivers and that is who are taking care of those who are sick. Lord Jesus, we ask for your protection upon us, Lord. Bring your spirit into this place, Lord. Touch and lift up. Lord. Heal him. And in your name we say, amen. Smile at somebody as you're being seated. A uh, few quick announcements this morning. Um, glad to see everyone's smiling faces here. Glad to have everyone online with us uh, as we have uh, Brother Azzalini with us again this morning. So hopefully you've come expecting. He will join us again this evening as well, so come back. If you're able, join us in person. There's nothing like the fellowship, Lord, and being in God's house. Uh, and then Brother Azzalini will be with us again next Sunday evening as well. Ladies, if you're planning on going to La Comedia, your money is due today. So see, please, please see Sister Paula with that. Uh, as a reminder for those of us who have been participating in the small group, our last session is tomorrow night. 6.30, if you have any questions, see my wife or myself. Kids Power Hour will be having what I am thankful for this weekend, or this Wednesday. So invite your uh, kids, your grandkids, your neighbors, even your nieces and nephews. They're allowed to come too. Uh, Bible quizzing practice on Thursdays, 6 p.m. here at the church. And then under construction next Saturday uh, at 11 a.m. here at the church. If you have any questions, see Sister Denise on that. If our ushers will come forward at this time. And we have our offering scripture today. First Chronicles 29 and 9 says, Then the people rejoiced, for they offered willingly, because, the per because with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. So we will pray over this offering. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time together once again. Lord Jesus, we ask that you bless this offering for the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord. Bless the gift and the giver as they give with a willing heart, Lord Jesus, that they may see abundance come from you. In your name we pray. Amen. Oh, 
praised. Oh, praise Him in this place this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you've come expecting, if you've come needing, you came to the right place. Amen. There's nothing that our God can't do. If you need a prayer answer, today is the day. This building is the building. Our God is the God. Amen. Oh, continue to worship that great God. If you're needing something, reach out and ask for it. These altars are open at all times. Our God is available at all times. Hallelujah. Every 
Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus. I'm going to tell you what I feel in the Holy Ghost right now. Hatoroboshia. 1 Samuel chapter 16 and 1 says this. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Hatoboshia. And I'm going to tell you what I feel in the Holy Ghost right now. The Lord came to Samuel, his man, and he rebuked him because there was something that he just couldn't get over, that he couldn't get past, and God was ready to move on and do a new thing. And the Holy Ghost, as the Holy Ghost was moving through this sanctuary just a few moments ago and ministering, ha, Tio Shaya. What I felt is there were some people that were hesitating to respond. Waiting, thinking, hey, it's almost time for the preaching, so I'm not going to go up there right now and, and in a few minutes have to go back to my seat. The preaching, the singing, everything that is done in a service is to get you to where we were just a few moments ago. And what I really feel in the Holy Ghost right now is there's some people in this room that have some stuff in your life that it's time to move past. It's time to get over. God has tried to show you week after week. I have flipped the page. I have started a new chapter. And you're still trying to live in an old chapter. You're still trying to remain in an old season. But the season has already shifted. There are some people that are hanging around the rubble of their stronghold that fell weeks ago thinking, what do I do now? Where do I go now? I don't know what to do from here. There are people that had breakthroughs weeks ago and you're just standing there wondering, God, what do I do? I'm going to tell you what you do. You get over it. You put one foot in front of the other and you walk forward into uncharted territory. God did not deliver you to leave you standing next to a wasteland of wreckage, but he delivered you to move you forward into victory. I ask this praise team to stay up here because they're getting ready to sing this song again. And I'm going to invite you this time. Rather, I'm going to release you just as our worship leader already did one time under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to release you again and tell you that the Holy Ghost is looking for a response right now. He has already laid down a challenge in the Spirit and has asked the body, are you ready to move past yesterday? Are you ready to move past those old defeats? Are you ready to move forward into victory? Are you ready to move past that pain? Are you ready to move past that grudge? Are you ready to move forward from that struggle? How long will you mourn for Saul? I have called you to arise and move forward today in Jesus' name. So as this worship team begins to sing that song uh, one more time. Uh, I'm inviting you right now uh, not to allow anything uh, or anyone uh, to keep you uh, from moving forward uh, into the victory uh, that God has ordained for you today. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my
Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, why don't you give them some thanksgiving right now? Oh, blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, mighty God. Mighty God. Mighty God. Oh, what an awesome, awesome presence of the Lord that we are enjoying in this house already. Amen. Come on, some of you are going back to your seat with liberty that you didn't have just a few moments ago. Ah, come on, you're going, you're going back to your pew and you, you don't feel encumbered like you did just a few moments ago. It feels like something has lifted off of you. Ah, come on, if I'm describing you, would you just lift your hands ah, and lift your voice and, and just go ahead and take 30 seconds and just begin to give God some glory. Ah, begin to give God some thanksgiving. Ah, Jesus, oh, we thank you for what you've done in this house already. Oh, we thank you for speaking to us already, for ministering to us already. Oh, we are so grateful this morning. Ah, we love you, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ah, come on, let's clap our hands to the Lord one more time. I, I just feel such an abundance of gratitude in my spirit right now. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Turn in your Bibles with me this morning to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 7. And then we'll move over to Jeremiah 18 verses 1 through 6. And I'm cognizant of the time. I promise not to go too long this morning. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. Jeremiah 18 verses 1 through 6. While you turn in there, I just want to say what an honor it is to be back with you on this Sunday, <clears throat> on this cold Sunday. Amen. Everybody with a remote starter for their vehicles said, praise the Lord, right? <laughs> I said, Jesus, make them standard in all new vehicles. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. You know, as we were moving through the worship service there a few moments ago uh, you know I try to act, I try to consult with God about every part of a service even this like first little minute you know where you're uh, have some preliminaries to speak about and and I said Lord how would you like for me to give honor today and, and, and uh, move through these preliminaries he said he said you know just thank them because there is a partnership of faith that is being established. I feel the Holy Ghost so strong in this room right now. Pastor, I give you honor. I thank you for allowing this partnership of faith to become established. Hallelujah. I thank you for allowing the office of an evangelist to operate in this church. Hallelujah. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. You're blessed. You're blessed. <laughs> I feel like I'm preaching to a healthy church this morning. I'm not talking about physically. You may have issues in your body, but I'm just talking about spiritually. God has been developing a healthy congregation here in Middletown. That's so important so important mm. healthy churches have revival amen alright I'll move on I'm belaboring the point I know 2 Corinthians 4 and 7 but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not 
of us. You ever come up against a challenge and you just kind of feel weak? You wake up one day and you don't understand it because yesterday you were Mount Victorious, but today you can barely get your head off the pillow. We're earthen vessels. We're made of dust. It's by design, divine design that we sometimes feel weak and sometimes feel frail. Because the excellency of His power is going to be what's on display in your life, not your power. He designed us to need Him, to rely on Him. The enemy tries to beat us up with that frailty, doesn't he? You get up and you're like, man, what's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you. You were made that way. And that feeling of weakness, that feeling of frailty is there to remind you, hey, you're made of dust. And the reason you're feeling this way right now is because you need me. So every time you feel that way, that's just God saying, hey, come into communion. Come back into covenant. Come back into relationship. Come back into my presence. You don't have to despise the way that you feel when you get up and you feel a little off your game. All that means is, hey, I need to get alone with Jesus and spend some time in his presence. Don't let the devil lie to you. Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel. As seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, Behold, As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. Man, I feel such a, I feel the ministry of the Holy Ghost today. God's here to minister to you right where you are. He's here to minister to you at your point of need. He's here to minister strength and encouragement and faith to you today. Would you pray with me? Jesus, we love you and we are so thankful to be in your house today. We're so thankful for this partnership of faith. So thankful, God. Lord, for the life that is in these words. So thankful. Lord, for the ministry of your spirit in this room. Lord, I pray right now that you would put a fresh anointing on me to preach your word to your people. Let a quickening come on me in this hour. To deliver what thus saith the Lord. Put a hedge about my lips, O God. Ah, la Moshiach, release deliverance and healing in this room. Release the ministry of the word and the spirit to have its way. Come on, if you're going to give God access to this morning, would you just lift your hands one more time? Hataramusha, one more time before we're seated. Lift your voice, lift your hands, and just tell God, tell Him out loud, God, I'm going to open myself up to you this morning. God, you know what I need better than I. I'm going to put myself in your hands today. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
I'm going to preach these scriptures to you today, and so as I go, I'm just going to reread them one at a time as I begin to share with you what I feel like the Lord has uh, directed me to share with you today. Verse 1 said, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Hallelujah. Arise and go down to the potter's house. I give you honor today because you didn't stay home. You didn't stay in bed. You didn't let your mountain cause you to cower in a corner. But this morning when you woke up, the word of the Lord was released to you and said, Arise. And come to the potter's house. You know, the enemy will work double overtime just to stop verse the first word. <laughs> that first word arise. He'll do everything that he can just to get you to sit down. He'll do everything he can just to get keep you laying down he'll convince you oh you're just going to go through the motions uh, and nothing's going to happen and it's just the same old same old uh, but the word of the Lord was released to Jeremiah mm, you know that's how God does uh, he sends an invitation uh, and he says hey uh, where you are right now uh, where you are right now uh, you're having a difficult time engaging with me you're having a difficult time time hearing me but if you just have the faith to get up if you just have the gumption to arise from where you are I know you got a whole lot of stuff to climb over and I know that there's some wreckage in your path and I know that you got some weights tied to your feet and you feel like you can't make the journey but if you just get up and come to the potter's house if you just come into an atmosphere where I can speak to you if you just come into an atmosphere where you'll have a little liberty he said come to the potter's house where you can hear my word Jeremiah you know what he was saying he said it's too loud where you are there's too much background noise there's too much distraction where you are there's too much of a mess around you you ever sat down to try to study brother Tyler and as soon as you sit down to study you notice every little thing that's out of place in the room and every little noise becomes a distraction and you gotta tidy up a little bit and you gotta turn everything off and close the door and you gotta situate the environment uh, in such a way uh, where you can bring your mind into focus. Uh, that's exactly uh, what God was saying to Jeremiah. Uh, he said if you just get up uh, from where you are, uh, if you just move past uh, where you are uh, and come to my house, uh, it is in that place, Jeremiah. Uh, I've already prepared the atmosphere. Uh, there's no distraction there. Uh, there's no heaviness there. Uh, but in that atmosphere, uh, you're going to begin to hear my words, Jeremiah. I got something I want to speak to you that you can't hear in your current environment. I need you to come to the potter's house. You ever notice every tool the enemy has at his disposal is to keep you out of church. Everyone, you can't go there. You ought to be ashamed. You can't go there. You're already condemned. The Bible says he's the prince of the power of the air. Sometimes you feel like the disciples in the boat, right? You're out on the sea and the storm shows up and the waves start getting big and that wind is strong and it's dark outside and you don't even know where you are and you're just wishing and praying that you could get to the shoreline. And fear begins to overtake you. Nothing will paralyze you like fear will. 
Jesus was in the boat the whole time. The enemy wanted to convince him that they were going to die out there in that sea. But God had destined a shoreline for them. It's the same thing in our life when a storm shows up. The enemy says, this is going to be what takes you out. This is going to be the thing you don't come back from. This is going to be the thing that determines the rest of your life. This will determine your destiny. You'll never be able to live for God. You'll never be able to be a part of the church. You're never going to walk in victory. You know what that is? It's the prince of the power of the air. Just throwing a fit in the atmosphere of your life. Trying to convince you that you can never be a child of God. Trying to convince you that the storm is everything that will ever be in your life. But I hear the word of the Lord uh, being sent to you uh, in the middle of your storm uh, saying fear not uh, that's just the adversary uh, throwing a fit uh, in the atmosphere uh, trying to distract you uh, and convince you uh, that you can't make it to my house you ever try to invite somebody to church I mean, their life can be a wreck. But brother, they got a million and one excuses why they can't come to the house of God. Right? Oh, no way. I can't, I can't. Those people are so holier than thou. No, I could never look like them. Oh, man, y'all went quiet fast. Like, y'all just leaving me hanging. That's all right. I'm, gonna, I'm fixing to. Come on. This one's with me. They've already heard a voice that has convinced them. Oh, those people are too judgmental. Those people are so uppity. I can't be hanging around no church folk. Oh, no. God would strike me dead if I walked in that building. My shoes would be on fire if I crossed through that door. Right? It's how they think. It's how they talk. They really believe that stuff. You know why? (laughs) Because the only thing that they can hear outside the potter's house is the voice of the adversary. That's why God has sent the church. He said, send them a word and tell them, if you can just get to my house, if you can just get to my house, if you can just get to my house, if you can just bring yourself, Jeremiah, into my house, you're going to be able to hear my voice. That's what you need to tell that friend of yours. Hey, I know you got a million reasons why you can't come, but if you'll come just one time, you're going to hear a voice that you can't hear out here. You're going to hear a voice. You're going to feel something that you can't feel out here. You got to get to the potter's house. Arise. 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 You know, a lot of times they need you to tell them. Because, see, Jeremiah, thankfully, was able to at least to recognize that initial invitation, right? But a lot of times, people in the world don't even recognize his voice when he begins to draw upon them. Samuel didn't know his voice. Not at first. He moved in to the house of God. Right? He was an intern. He was interning in the house of God.
Some of y'all need to intern in the house of God and stop just visiting the house of God. Because when you intern in the house of God, you start to learn the voice of God. And who was it that was able to tell Samuel when God was speaking? Oh, that's right. It was the man of God that said, that's the voice of God. So listen and respond when he speaks to you in the potter's house. That's why you need a man of God in your life. You need to know what voice to listen to. Some of you write it off as bad pizza. I had some good pizza last night. For the time I got in. And I ate before I left, you know what I mean? But I stayed up late enough. This has nothing to do with my sermon. I'm just sharing this with you. It's just a good Yelp review. I stayed up late enough. I got hungry. So I ordered my cousin Vinny's pizza. Man, that was good. I was like, this pizza shop's named after me. They got it going on. They don't even open till midnight, so that tells you something. Anyway. Yeah, I was hearing a voice all right. My God. <laughs> all right, y'all help me get back on track here. Ah. Jeremiah came to the potter's house. This was so awesome. The Bible says that when he walked in, he said, I beheld the potter's work. <sighs> you ever had somebody, you ever get the guests here finally, and then they walk in, they see all of us, they're like, oh man, I knew I shouldn't have come. I don't look like you. I don't talk like you. I sure ain't going to dance like you. <laughs> Why does everybody look the way they look? Why does everybody talk the way they talk? And they get it in their mind. Oh, I could never be like you, brother. Oh, you dressed to the nines. You so handsome. You got that fine looking suit on. I can't live that kind of life. But you know, they're not here very long before the scales begin to fall from their eyes and they realize I wasn't born this way. I wasn't born this way. No, there was a day in my life when I was just like you where somebody said, Arise, Vinny, come to the potter's house. And I came in and I was shocked just like you were. And I looked just like you were. Hey, baby, I wasn't born in a suit, but I stayed in the potter's house long enough for him to put his hands on me and begin to do a work in me. Hey, when they come in, you better let them know. Hey, friend, what you see is not just people in fancy clothes. What you see over there, that man used to be an alcoholic. What you see over there, she used to be a drug addict. What you see over there, she used to be bound by depression. But the potter got his hands on them and changed their life. If you can get them in the potter's house, the Lord will peel back every lie, every lie, every lie that the world speaks about the church. He'll say, no, this isn't what you thought it was. This is my handiwork. This is my handiwork. These are my vessels. These are my earthen vessels. I made this clay. It's my fingerprints that are on his life. You know what's awesome? Ah. Huh. He came in to the potter's house. And you know what he saw? He saw all these earthen vessels. But the broken one, the broken one 
was in his hands. He walked in that door. Jeremiah did. And what was in his hands, he wasn't showing one off, saying, look at this one and look at that one. No, there were vessels of display, but the broken one was in his hands. He said, I'm not going to put this one down. They've already been struggling. They've already been wrestling. They came in broken. I'm not going to let him fall to the floor and break again. No, I'm going to keep this one in my hand uh, until I form uh, something beautiful uh, in their life. That was for all of you who knew well enough to receive it. Now I'm going to preach to the ones that think I'm not preaching to them. Huh. Mm. See, we get it in our mind. And I'm supposed to come one time and be perfect. Well, I've come for a year. Everything in my world should be picture perfect now. But we trip up, don't we? No, just me? All right. And as soon as we trip, who's right there? I knew you couldn't do it. Told you so. Failure, reject, no value, no beauty, no purpose, just stay on the floor. He's not interested in you. I'm in the Holy Ghost. There's something breaking right now. I'm preaching to the saints right now who've been coming to church for a long time and you beat yourself up every week because you wrestle with this and you wrestle with that and you trip over this and you trip over that and the enemy's voice is the strongest voice in your life. He's always there to condemn you. He's always there to shame you. He's always there to remind you of your failure. But I read in this scripture right here in Jeremiah 18. Ah, in the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again. He made it again. He made it again. Every morning, I get up and I say, Jesus, make me again. Make me again, Jesus. Make me again, Jesus. I, 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 don't let the enemy convince you uh, that this is a destination uh, type of journey. Uh, honey, the destination is until eternity. Uh, on this side of glory, uh, you're on a journey. Uh, and on this journey, uh, I need the potter uh, to make me again uh, every uh, single uh, day. Uh, I say, God, uh, I still got some brokenness. Uh, would you pick me up? Uh, God, uh, I'm still wrestling with fear would you pick me up God I still got this hang up would you make me again uh, <laughs> the devil is a liar. He's a liar. He lies all day, every day. He never shuts his mouth. I came to kick the devil in the head today. 
I'm tired of him lying to you and shaming you for your brokenness. You know what the word says? A broken heart thou will not despise. A broken and a contrite spirit. When God sees brokenness, he comes running and says, let me pick that up. Let me pick that up. Let me pick that up. He said, I love your brokenness. It's what I'm looking for. Let me put you in my hand. Oh, Vinny. It's just for the sinner. Really? I don't know. I don't know what you are, but I'm a sinner saved by grace. You know what Paul's? Don't get scared of that word, okay? Calm down. You know what Paul said? He called himself a sinner, and he didn't say it in past tense. He said, of whom I am chief. He said, I'm the greatest of sinners. He said, hey friend of mine, there's going to be times that you mess up and fall down, but his grace is there to pick you up and put you back in the potter's hand. Don't let the devil shame you for your brokenness and your mistakes. Just say, potter, I need you to make me again. Would you stand to your feet with me? I know y'all used to me preaching an hour. I told you I wouldn't go long today. It was 30 minutes, Brother Tyler. You better buckle up later, though. My minutes roll over. <laughs> Bring your comfy clothes tonight. Ah, you're an earthen vessel. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Anybody ever heard that verse before? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized. Now, you know what repentance is? It's saying, hey, Potter, I need you. I need you to pick me up. I did it again, Potter. I fell down. I messed up. But, Potter, I need you to do it again. I need you to make me again. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. What happens after that? I can't remember. Do you remember? You get filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, you get filled with the Holy Ghost. That's right. You get filled? What? You drink coffee? Oh, yeah, me too. I drank some this morning, two cups. It's a little light for me, actually. I'm more of a half pot kind of guy. You take one. All right. I'm going to have to slow down too eventually, so. You know, I didn't pour it on the table. I had to put it in something. I'm going to pour out my spirit. You know what he's doing? I'm going to pour myself out. I love what Brother Josh Carson said at camp meeting. He said, people say, I received the Holy Ghost. I received it. He said, you didn't receive an it. You received a who. You received a who. You received him. Well, if I received him, and he's filling me, if he's going to abide in me, where do you live? Where do you live? Where do you live? At my house. At his house. Where does he live? In the potter's house. 
Do you realize? He said, I made you an earthen vessel. Ah, you were marred. You were broken. But I put you together. And now, I'm going to fill you up. And you're going to become my house. And I'm going to abide in you. And you're going to abide in me. Ah, that word abide is just resonating in my spirit right now. Thinking of that verse. Can't put new wine in old wineskins. I feel like the Lord is reaching for somebody right now. That's why this few, few moments are drawing out right here. God is reaching for somebody right now. And He's saying, hey, just let me. Come on. Just let me. Just let me. Just let me. Come on. Just give me permission. I, I can do something with that brokenness. Come on. I, you don't have to live in the desert. I, you don't have to walk through a parched land. I, you don't have to weather the storm feeling dried out in your spirit. I, he said, come on. I, let me make you again. I, let me make you again. I, and let me fill you I, full I, of me. <laughs> That's it. I'm finished. It's time to respond to the Holy Ghost today. If you want Him to make you again, I release you to respond right now. If you want Him to abide in you and you in Him, I, I release you to respond right now. Arise and go to the potter's house. Arise. Move past your comfort zone. Move past your excuses. And say, God, I, I, Lord, I'm marred again. Lord, if you could just pick me up. Lord, if you could just fill me full and overflowing again. Come on, saints. I release you to minister. I release you to respond. I release you to pray one for another. Come on, let faith join the faith. Lord, release a renewing of your spirit right now. God, you see every broken situation, every broken vessel, every shattered faith. Lord, every vessel that's been marred by circumstance, every vessel that's been marred by pain. Oh, God, today, would you pick us up? Would you pick us up? Would you pick us up again? Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath.